Dragon Slayer has a very unique sort of darker tone uh, with this new release of the movie coming after 40 year, over 40 years. Uh, how do you look back on the film personally? Um, with a lot of renewed affection. I had, uh, in some regard, kind of um, put it off my screen because um, uh, the... Back in the day, it was it was released uh, on VHS tapes and early DVDs, and it looked pretty bad. It was uh, sort of an assembly line. It was cranked out by an indifferent robotic technician somewhere, <laughs> and it was it looked it, you could see a lot of defects that were totally unacceptable. ILM and myself would never have allowed it to go out like that. So I did my best to not talk about it, <laughs> and. Um, but um, now, um, have have you seen this new? Um, uh, the, yeah, it, it's. Um, I feel very differently about it. I feel uh, I'm so relieved and glad that uh, this team of uh, technicians and artists at uh, Paramount uh, elected to do this. This was not something that I campaigned for, or you know, uh, Guillermo del Toro, who's a fan of the movie, had not. We, we I was asked about that. Did you guys? No, this came from the studio. Um, wow. And so um, I was amazed and uh, sort of disbelieving, actually. And uh, uh, when I live in, in, in Northern California and was invited down and made several trips down to L.A. and sat in on some of these sessions. And really, they took the lead. I mean, I, I was part of it and had opinions, but it was it was they, they were really on top of it almost every technical issue. And so um, how I do I feel about it? Immense gratification. <laughs> That's awesome. And speaking of the visual effects, you know, between yourself and the the legendary Phil Tippett, what was that collaboration like? Oh, that was just great. I'm still in touch with him. He lives uh, in Berkeley. And, and so I live in uh, West Marin County. So it's not that far. And uh, he, he, um, I think had been champing at the bit at ILM to do this kind of work. Um, Hal Barwood and I, um, the we had been around when George was creating ILM, and we were pretty well acquainted with Phil, Dennis Muren, and Ken Ralston, and uh, Bruce Nicholson, and all the lead players in this in this core group of of ILM. And we thought, why not put all that horsepower to work on something other than Starfield and ships, right? Other than than, than uh, aerial combat around uh, the Death Star. Why not? And this was an answer to Phil Tippett's prayers, you know, because Phil was a stop motion guy and a huge fan of, you know, creatures. Um, we gave him a lot of difficulties. I mean, this, with that dragon design, which uh, turned out to be very influential, though we didn't know it at the time, um, it was not easy to bring that to life. Um, he had many issues, uh, which I'm sure he can <laughs> remember to this day. But they had come up um, with this Go Motion technique. Do you, you do you know about that? Go Motion is a it's one of the reasons. I read a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a way of making the stop motion instead of um, look um, kind of jittery and stat, you know uh, uh, quivering. It mm -hmm. gives a fluidity. To the movements and it's because um the uh, each frame is being shot in motion traditional stop motion up until the invention of go motion that um uh, would be move the uh, armature and the creature take a frame or two move it again take a frame or two and so when projected everything is sharp but with go motion there there's a there's rods on a green screen and and the, and the stepping motors that are moving a, a, a pre-programmed movement and the camera the shutter is open during the movement and so the extremities i say the the, the um the, are are blurred the way they are in actual um normal photography and that was new to dragon slayer They'd use it a little bit on Kirshner's movie, Empire Strikes Back, just a little bit, but they got to fully uh, uh, employ it. And it's why they got nominated for an Oscar for what they did on Dragon Slayer. That's incredible. And like you mentioned, you know, Vermithrax in particular is so impressive. And other creatives like Guillermo del Toro, as you said, and Alex Bledsoe and George R. R. Martin have all talked about how Dragon Slayer and Vermithrax 
still stand out and have influenced them. What does that mean to you to hear that kind of thing? Uh, it's very uh, a lovely tribute. Uh, I actually briefly met Peter Jackson years ago, and he made mention of that. Uh, but uh, then there's Game of Thrones, and now that um, I mean, dragons are everywhere. And and I uh, I'm only I only regret that um, the um, artist uh, um, David Bennett was his name, who was largely responsible for that for Vermithrax. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, and he's not here to bask in all the uh, the glory that um, he, uh, Hal Borrow and I had some very strong opinions on what we didn't want in the dragon. We didn't want a four footed dragon. We wanted a two footed dragon with claws on the end of the wings. But the 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 ferocity, the the pure nastiness of the face of uh, Vermithrax and all the rest of it, David was uh, just managed to, um, to to find exactly the right tonality. He was really a brilliant um, designer. That's amazing. Yeah. And to change gears a little bit, you know, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio just took home the Academy Award for Best Animated Picture, and you were an instrumental part in crafting that story. Uh, what did that mean, that win? What did that win mean for you? I was thrilled beyond measure, first of all, that the movie got made <laughs> and that it yeah. got Best Animated Film. I was super happy because um, I wrote my draft um, eleven more than 11 years ago when he, wow. I, I, yeah, uh, he was down in New Zealand. I went down to Wellington a couple of times where we laid out what this movie was going to be. And he was uh, in pre-production on uh, that movie. Uh, so it seemed. <laughs> and and so I went back to California and I wrote a, a, a draft to that film. And uh, which was, you know, all the... Um, um, elements that you saw are uh, in there um, uh, based on Guillermo's very original vision as to uh, this um, this entity which does not become a little boy and nobody would make it. Nobody. We went everywhere with that and, and uh, I, eventually it was like brace yourself for more punishment. Each submission we, you know, and so um, that really uh, was, uh, it was years later he decided to introduce uh, songs. And uh, I think crack open the door at Netflix to going forward with it. Um, so, and it was a miracle that uh, it ever saw the way. I, I pretty much resigned my, because I've written a lot of movies with Guillermo that are never going to be, we must have 10 or 11 screenplays. <laughs> are never, I mean, but we just had a lot of fun um, uh, when he was on the rise in Hollywood and, and going from strength to strength. And um, we we spent a lot of time writing a, a, a bunch of movies that um, um, have not happened. But I, I, uh, I've been asked about this uh, in the past and several times today, uh, which is that when I first met him in Guadalajara at a workshop that the Sundance Institute organized, we were assigned a uh, at random need to advise him on something mm -hmm. but it turns out he was a massive dragon slayer fan and so we talked a lot about dragon slayer and as you can hear in the bonus track on the the, the dvd he's um <laughs> undiminished enthusiasm uh for the for the movie to this day absolutely that's awesome. Thank you so much. That's all the time I have, but okay. it's been really insightful. So thank you so much. I'm glad. I'm I, I, I'm 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 kind of amazed that uh, the movie is getting uh, so much enthusiastic reception. Very uh, pleased, of course, gratified. <laughs> <laughs>